This episode is brought to you by tvsportsblog.com. Hello and welcome back to another edition of the podcast with me, Harry Simu. And as always, I'm joined by a fantastic guest. This fantastic guest has played for a number of football clubs. He's played for Manchester City. He's played for Leeds. He's played for Chelsea. He's played for the Republic of Ireland. I'm really pleased to announce Terry Phelan's back. How you doing, mate? Hello, H. How are you, pal? Not too bad, my friend. Not too bad. Um, struggling without football. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, but yeah. of course, you know, I think we can all agree that the wider issue is is far more important, and, and that is where the focus needs to be at the minute. Yeah, it sure is, isn't it? You know, we've got uh, uh, some tough times ahead of us, but I'm sure, you know, with the communities around around the world, we can help each other get through this. Obviously, uh, it's not just it, the sports, it's it, everything else, businesses, uh, families f- from across the world. Uh, but hopefully we can, we can, you know, all pull together, we can pray, we can be strong and we can... Uh, we can all get through it, uh, no matter where we are in the uh, in, in the world. And maybe now it's time to stand up and, and think positive about things, and you know, uh, and and really, really stay strong and, and be together. H. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Terry, let's let's talk football. Um, you know, the the season has come to an abrupt pause, but you know, as we've already said, we understand the reasons why, and we're fully behind the yeah. fact that mm. it's all been suspended, but. I wanted to get your thoughts on on a couple of of matters, mm. specifically ones including some of your former clubs. Let's start with mm. Manchester City, twenty five yes. points off of Liverpool as it stands. Yes, um, I know yes. they've got a game in hand, but they've fallen yes. way off of the pace this season. For me, when I look at it from the outside, I, I try to come to conclusions as to why that might be the case. And I guess one of the big mm. standout reasons is the fact that maybe they didn't replace Vincent Company. Maybe that's come back to bite them. What's been your take on Manchester City season overall? And why do you think it is that they've been so far off the pace? Well, I, th- I think, you know, uh, don't forget last season, they only won the league by one point. So, you know, and they won 15 straight games on the trot to win the, to win the EPL last year. Otherwise, it would, have been Liverpool's, it would have been Liverpool's title. We do know that. Uh, this year, I think Manchester City have been found out a little bit, especially at the back. But then, you know, if you look at the players they've got at the back, you know, they've got centre-backs there. But, you know, the, going forward, they're absolutely excellent. They're probably one of the best teams in the world going forward. But that's not enough. You know, when you want to win championships... You've got to have the players at the back. If you look at the great teams of the past, you know, you look at the Manchester United, you look at the Arsenal teams of the past who went on to win it, the the Chelsea teams, you know, Manchester City, yes, they have won it, uh, the EPL. We know that. But I think just this season, they've been caught a little bit cold. Pep's been caught a little bit cold uh, regarding his his back centre-backs. He has had injuries. I think if he wouldn't have got them injuries, it may have been a different cause. But, uh, you know, when you've got people like young lads like John Stones there who's not getting a game, they paid £50 million for him. You know, uh, Otamendi is, is stepped in the back. I don't think he is uh, the, the player what really is for Manchester City at the back. He does a great job defending uh, on occasions, but he gets caught an awful lot. So, you know, I don't think they've really re- replaced that area uh, too well. You know, but on, a, on another uh, note, H... They've had terrible injuries and all that in that area. Absolutely, at, at yeah. the wrong at the at the wrong time. So I, you can't blame Pep for that. You know, then you think about what centre backs are about. How much is it going to cost? You know, they're already in trouble uh, a little bit with the fair play. How 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 much is there? How much is about? You know, do, do, you know, is he going to spend 150 million, 120 million on a centre back? You know, so it really determines does players want to go and all. But 25 points, it's a hell of a lot. And I'm sure Pep sat there scratching his head, you know, for the games he's lost and all. Because I think they've lost seven games, uh, you know, over the course of the season. So It's actually you know, more than right. Arsenal, which is interesting, isn't it? It's more than Arsenal. We find yeah, themselves in it, it actually is. So, so, so it's not really it's, it's not really championship winning uh, team, then, is it? You know, we all know that, you know, four or five games, yes, you can, you can come back on it. You know, last year it was very touch and go, right down to the right down to the wire. And there you go, Vincent Company scoring that goal against Leicester. 
Manchester City probably would have lost the title last season. Yeah. No, it's just some great points. You make some fantastic points. And what do you make of this whole financial fair play thing and the fact that Manchester City find themselves in hot water? I'd imagine that behind the scenes, they're doing their utmost to obviously prove their innocence and, you know, not have to face this two-year European ban. My feeling is that it won't be upheld fully. I think that maybe they'll get away with a year, um, you know, providing they can provide the right information. But Mm. I feel Mm. like... And, you know, I'm not saying that they haven't broken any rules or that they have because I don't categorically know. But Mm. I feel like UEFA are trying to make an example of somebody because their their financial fair play thing has kind of been made a bit of a mockery of in recent years. Well, it sure has. You know, know, obviously we can't look too much into the Manchester City affairs. You know, I know people will have their own views and say, yeah, they should be banned for... uh, uh, two years, they should be fined 50 million, they should be this, should be that. Just because somebody's come in and invested in the club and made it, you know, a better place for supporters to come, a better stadium, better better academy for players to grow through. And, you know, they're trying to get the best players to win things, you know. But if they have stepped over the mark, we don't know about, then obviously, uh, you know, it, it, UEFA is going to come in and 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 they're going to they're going to cop. I think Manchester City have been under the the scope for a while, man. When you look at teams like PSG, you know, I'm sure they've spent the money. Barcelona, I'm sure Real Madrid, but I think Manchester City have been under the the, the microscope a lot longer than these teams. Maybe way back to 2011. Yeah. Uh, I know Arsene Wenger was uh, having a little uh, moan up about it uh, because he couldn't spend money and they was out spending money and we should be watching Manchester City because they're overspending, you know. And I think that maybe, maybe they've been made a little bit of a scapegoat if I can say that. And that that's <laughs> that's not coming. That's not saying that it's, I'm, a, I'm a former Manchester City player or a, you know a, a Manchester City fan. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they just have. Maybe they're just like now. I'm gonna admit, we'll make them the scapegoats, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I think if a, a club like Manchester City is thrown out of the competition uh, for two years, then there's two things. What would be good for Manchester City if it, happen, if, if it did happen? They could concentrate on a couple of things and go ahead and win them. Yeah, okay? absolutely. On and- the negative. And on, 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 on a negative thing, you know, it's not good then if they want to get players in and, and, and for the fans. You need, you need European football in a big club like Manchester City. And then do the players stay or do they leave? You know, are we going to have mercenaries who get up and just leave because maybe they do get banned? Or are we going to say, see these players stay, fight through it and, and, and get on with it? We don't know yet. Uh, We don't know what's going behind the doors at Manchester City. I'm sure they've got the right people in the right places to sort it out. Yeah, agreed. And and, and I always say this to sort of my friends and to colleagues when we're discussing this. I find it very hard to believe that they won't have you know, all the processes and the ball rolling mm. uh, to try and mm. clear their name. And I'm, I'm sure that yeah. at minimum, this ban will be reduced. Um, I, I think that's going to be the case anyway. Um, Terry, moving on to some of your other former clubs. And I was just looking at the list, actually, <laughs> before I called you. And <laughs> you, my you, God, there's I, a lot I, of clubs. I, I a <laughs> list as long as a, a street in Salford, I believe. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I've never <laughs> been to Salford, but I can imagine. Um, so just looking at some of these clubs, I'm not going to pull you up on every single no, club that no, you've ever no, played go for. Ahead. Um, but Leeds United, of course, oh, where, yes. where you started, you know, they're yes. very close to sealing promotion back up to the Premier League. They had a little bit of a dip a few weeks ago, yes. uh, maybe a yes. couple of months ago now, where it looked yeah. like perhaps they were falling off the rails. But Marcello Bielsa seems to have got them back on track. And there's mm. one player in particular that I want to ask you about, and that is Patrick Bamford. Because yes. I do quite a lot of work on Leeds United at the moment, and I've been yeah. following them yeah. very closely this season. And it seems yeah. to me like whatever Patrick Bamford does, the fans just don't appreciate him. I, I, I don't get that. I don't understand the negativity towards him. Can you see where they're coming from when they complain about his goal return? Well, I mean, he's been about, hasn't he, Patrick? He, you know, he's he's you know he's been there, he's been there, he's had a, he's had a few clubs himself. Uh, to tell the truth, I haven't watched him. I haven't watched him a lot. I haven't lot watched Leeds a lot. I do follow him occasionally, obviously, with, with the stature of the club and if they get back into the uh, 
the English Premiership, I think it'd be fantastic for the fans. They've got an enormous fan base. It's a massive club. You know, even from when I played there, the philosophy about Leeds is, I don't think it's really ever changed. Uh, you know, the fans are eager to get back in there. But regarding the player, you know, there's always a player in a, in a club where the fans don't take to, no matter what they do. There's always, there's always one. Uh, where they, they have a little bit of a disagreement about or they don't take to him. Why? I, I, I don't know. Maybe he, maybe off the ball he doesn't really work hard enough, you know, uh, when times are really tough, when they have to go to a really tough place. Maybe he doesn't really work hard enough off the, off the ball. But the manager is supporting him, so he must be doing something right while he's in the team. It agreed. And, you know? and, and that's the thing, he's, isn't he, it? Yeah, his goal ratio might not be the greatest. But if he's helping out, the fans have got to appreciate if the manager's playing him in that that team uh, for some unknown reason. Maybe the manager have got the manager's got nobody else to put in there. He's his only choice, you know. We know he's got the qualities, but you know, support him. You know, support the, the player. He's only a human being. Support him. Get behind him because if they go up, he'll be part of that team. What's what's got him into the uh, the EPL? So uh, I don't really know. But there's a, there's a, Harry. There's always. One player in every club who, who always get a little bit of stick off the uh, the fans, and it's it all it'll always happen for some unknown reasons. We don't know why. No, absolutely, and and his goal return isn't probably what it should be for a centre forward at the top of the championship. Yes. But it, yes. you're absolutely right when you say he must be doing something right because Marcelo Bielsa has stuck with this guy through thick and thin. He's obviously very important yeah. to his system and to his way of playing because he yes. took Eddie and Ketia on loan from Arsenal. Didn't play him. Yeah. He preferred Bamford. And even when Bamford well, wasn't scoring goals, he, he still clearly values the type of player that Patrick Bamford is and feels well, that he plays a vital role. Well, listen, you know, and this is where fans, this is where fans, you know, I won't be too critical of fans because they're, they're the ones who are there. They're the ones who are spending the money. They have their opinion like everybody else has their opinion. But they've got to look at the finer details in his play. You know, what does he do off the ball? Does he close players down? Does he shift centre-backs out of areas to allow other players to run into them areas? You know, does he hold the ball up and just lay it off and get in the box, you know? But he must be doing something why the manager's got him in there. And as a, as a, as a centre-forward and all, as his leading centre-forward, there must be something why the manager's got him in there. And the manager only know that. If, if he's not playing well then the manager wouldn't have him in there in the, in the first place. So he must be doing something well. So I say to the Leeds fans, get behind the lad, support the lad. And uh, hopefully, you know, they can all go into the, uh, the English Premiership uh, together. Agreed. Agreed. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not a particularly, you know, well, I'm not a Leeds fan. Um, but obviously, when you see big clubs like that, you know that they belong in the top flight. Oh. And so I'd be happy to see them promoted. I think that's really important for the English game as well to have another giant in the Premier yeah, League I've, again. is huge. Yeah, I think, Harry, the, the, the English Championship is the hardest league in the, league in the in the world. It's got to be. You look at the teams what are down there. I've, I, know I, I played in that and it was with Fulham, uh, obviously with Leeds back in the day, uh, with Crystal Palace, uh, you know, it's a tough old, it's a tough old, it's a tough, tough old league. And, you know, to get out of that is it's tough. And if Leeds can get out of that and cement themselves back in the uh, English Premiership, it'd be, I think it'd be fantastic. And I, I, I hope it does happen. Me too. Me too. Um, Terry, another one of your former clubs is Chelsea. Um, oh, yes. What have you made of Frank Lampard's first season in charge? From my perspective... He started the season with absolutely zero pressure because there was the transfer ban. There was this acceptance, mm. wasn't there, amongst the fans mm. that he was going to go down the approach of developing mm. the youth. Yeah. They fought, ta uh, you know, they, they fought really, really difficult to, uh, really hard, I should say, to overturn that transfer ban. And yeah. then yeah. they didn't do any business. Did that, in your opinion, add pressure back onto Frank Lampard? And, and how have you, you know, seen well, this first season? I I think as soon as Frank walked through the door, he was under pressure straight away. He was under pressure. Uh, he, he, he must have been under pressure. You know, obviously the fans love him. Super Frank's coming back. But I take my hat off to his assistant, Jody Morris. Frank's got in there. He knew that there was a transfer uh, ban on him for uh, two years. 
but he had a nucleus, like we've just like you just said, he had a nucleus of players who he believed could go into that Chelsea team and play. And I think it's done Frank the world of good. Yeah, I know they've lost a, a lot of games at home. I understand that. Uh, the younger players do get mentally drained a little bit, physically a little bit, and you do need them older players to uh, so like channel their energies back into them and lead the way. But I think he's done a fantastic job from not being able to go out and spend a lot of money. The problem, I think, for Frank will be, if he stays in the top four, it's a fantastic, fantastic season. The problem will be, when he gets that three or 400 million, if he gets it, what's he going to do with it? Yeah. That's the pressure. And then that, he, has to, yeah, it's, then it's, he has to deliver. It's another element of management, isn't it? At the moment, he's yes. coaching a group that he has. Yes. But now you're going to be asking he, him to manage an overall scenario where you've got to then identify players and I know he won't be doing that alone he'll, he'll have coaching no. staff and he'll have people in the club that help with that sort of thing but yeah, I think, it's another I think, test I think his recruitment policy has got to be fantastic he's got to find the right players not just on the, not just not just playing on a Saturday the right players who train well you know the right players who want to come and, and live in London who want to be at Chelsea for the, for the reason uh but I think he's doing a great job at the moment. You know, when we talk about these young managers coming in, oh, they're not experienced, they're not this, they're not that. But every manager has had to start somewhere. You look at you look at the German philosophy, how many young managers are there coaching at the top level? You know, uh, it happens and you've got to start somewhere. But I think the pressure for Frank will be, if he has got two or 300 million, what does he actually do with it? I'm sure they have a network of, uh, scouts around him who's already picking players now for his model and for his philosophy uh, but I think he's doing it I think the club in its whole is doing a great job at the moment you know they're in the top four if they can stay in the top four uh, fantastic exciting times ahead for them indeed um, and just finally Terry Sheffield United a club that you oh, also yeah, represented yeah. <laughs> how brilliantly yeah. have they done under Chris oh, Wilder and what have you um, made of their season I think you know what. Let's 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 think about the fan base first. And I had, I had a spell at uh, under Neil Warnock uh, uh, about f- two or three months at Sheffield United, and I've got to take me out off to the fans. Absolutely brilliant. Mass. Then we talk about big clubs. You know that is a that's a big fan base, big club. I think I think Chris has gone in there. He's got what he's got. He's got he's got the old brigade in there: English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh. And a couple of over overseas players, and he's knit them together. He's believed in his philosophy, and he's gone. Listen, let's go in there, a bit like Wimbledon. Let's go in there and let's enjoy it, boys. Whatever happens, let's enjoy it. Let's try and stay in this league. We're going to lose games, but we're going to win a, a majority of games at home. I think he's done a great job. But you know, when he's looking at other teams and they've got superstars sat on the bench, I'm sure he pulls his hair out when he looks across and he goes. <laughs> oh, we're playing Chelsea today. They've got all the superstars, and I'm on. I've got a group of lads who have knitted together. Uh, we believe in the cohesiveness within the team and the the the, the club is absolutely. You can you can smell it. You can breathe it. I think he's done a fantastic job, and hats off to him with what he's got. No disrespect to any of them players because they're playing a style of football which suits them and is winning them games. A little bit like Burnley, what Burnley are doing. Uh, a little bit like w- what Bournemouth was doing in the early stages when they come in, you know. And I think he's done a, a, a wonderful job, and may it continue for him. You know, hope they don't have second season syndrome where it all goes, you know, a bit pear shaped, and, and then players see the stars and they want to go to other teams. If he can add to that, stay in there, gets a little bit of money, add one or two players into that uh, team, they should be all right. Sheffield United. Agreed, and for me, hands down, manager of the season, without question, Chris Wilde. They oh, yes. For me. Oh, yes. Imagine if he gets them into Europe. In- it would be incredible. It- it- that would hey. be an incredible achievement in their first season. And I went to Bramall Lane this season when they played Arsenal, and I you know, was taken aback by how sort of traditional and the stadium is and I was in the away end and you can almost reach yeah. out and touch the net of the goal like that's yes. how close you yeah. are incredible atmosphere yeah. really one great of those place it's, it is I'm getting goose pimples thinking about <laughs> the place because I played there and I think the fans was great you know the, and, and 
They've done, I mean, listen, they've, they've, they've come a long way. And like we said about, you know, going back to Leeds United and other teams who have, who have dropped down and come back. I just don't know Sheffield United can stay up there and, and, and really work hard. And, you know, uh, if Leeds get up there, then you've got another big Yorkshire derby, haven't you? Exactly. And, and just finally, you mentioned Neil Warnock there. Is he mm. as crazy in the in the flesh oh. as he uh, oh, as yeah. he seems? <laughs> lovely man, you know Neil. I, I I went there and lovely man, different personality than anybody I've, uh, any manager I've ever seen. And you know he just wanted you to work hard. And if you didn't respect that, you got a rollicking off him. But for me, it was he had his ways. Uh, but he got the best out of players, you know. And he expected the older players to really get onto the the younger players and work them. And I think he's had a fantastic uh, uh, career as Neil. I don't, I think he's, I think he's only 25 young, isn't he? <laughs> if, you, if, if you're listening, Neil, but no, I think he's, uh, you know, he, he helped me out. Well, he gave me three months to get myself fit at Sheffield United. I never had any problems. It was a great time. He had people like Keith Curl there and all who helped him. So, so for me, I, you know, I, I learned a lot of you Neil know, just the way he was in the training, what he wanted out of training. You know, training was fierce, it was tough, it was hard. You know, he, he was always on the training field pushing you. Uh, but then he give you the time to relax as a player. You know, uh, and pop round to his house and maybe watch uh, the video of the game and give you a rollick in his house. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was Neil. But then come back to you and say, hey lad, have a beer. It's on me. Fantastic bloke and. Uh, uh, hopefully he's, uh keeps doing well. Yeah, agreed. And, and it, it, I could just imagine. Can you imagine turning off at Neil Warnock's house knowing that you're going to get a rollicking? <laughs> it's like stepping well, the, the, across well, enemy you lines. Then, you, you, yeah, but, uh, you, you, uh, but it's just, he's a one-off, isn't he? You know, he's a one-off. And, you know, you need people like that in the game. And uh, for, for me, he, he did get the, you know, he, he made players and all. Don't forget the, the players who went to big clubs and all. Uh, so for me yeah he was, he was great he helped me out for that three months and I, I fully enjoyed it brilliant stuff Terry thank you so much for your time mate I know you're really really busy so we really do appreciate it well I'm, 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 I'm kicking the toilet roll around like everybody else <laughs> on these videos I've only I, I think Jamie Carragher did one keep up I've done a half keep up at the, this present time I so, think I'm going to uh, give it a go tonight I think I'll give it a go I'll, yeah yeah I'll get the lads I'll get the lads so we're all housebound but uh, God bless. May everybody be healthy, stay well, and, we, and all our communities come together. And we, you know, we stick together. Now, when it's if it if it does pass over, you know, we start appreciating the finer details of life. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you so much, Terry. And we'll Thank speak you, soon. H. All the best. Thanks, mate. Bye bye. Bye bye. This episode is brought to you by TVSportsBlog.com. <laughs>